electronics this is the third part of this is the third part of vssc 2019 june technician b electronics question paper solution question number question number 51 which of the following is not an architecture of analog to digital converter option a successive approximation option b counter ramp option c dual slope option d power to a ladder the answer is option d r to a ladder network r to a ladder network so r to a ladder network this is a dac actually this is a dac digital to analog converter the r to a ladder network okay is like this Little, the R to R ladder network is consist of R and 2R resistors. That means R means if it's one, this resistor is 1K, 1 kilo ohm, then the other will be 2 kilo ohm. So it is R to R ladder network. R to R ladder network. This is R. This is 2R, uh, this also 2R. So, on 4 bit, I will show you how it looks. Oh, sorry, sorry, here also we need one more R. This is R, and this is 2R. One more two R. This is two R. This is the R again two R. Two R. So this will go to a pop amp amplifier. Plus will be grounded. Uh, this is a minus. Again, there will be it's a, a summing amplifier. It's a summing inverted summing amplifier. It works like inverted summing amplifier. So this is the feedback resistor, and here you will get the output. So if you look at this, see here. This is this is the LSB. A, B, C, D. So what uh, depending on the inputs here, inputs it could be one zero zero zero. So this this is a, this is the R to R ladder network. Now uh, depending upon the inputs, this four bits output will be getting the analog output. Output is analog, analog, analog. So it is a DAC. So so this is digital to analog converter the remaining three successive approximation counter ramp dual stop all these are analog to digital converter analog to digital converter so here what happens if we say uh, successive approximation successive approximation if we take there it will it will have one uh, one uh, successive approximation resistor will be there successive approximation resistor will be there uh, that that will be fed by a, a DAC so inside of these DAC is there in it and this this will have input of analog analog input and the digital output similar way a counter type counter type also will have a digital to analog converter inside uh, in dual stop this is dual stop dual stop is something integrating type 
that means it look like an op amp there will be an op amp op amp so the see this is the op amp integrator op amp integrator means the feedback part will have a capacitor will have a capacitor uh, this is the negative so this is the dual slope type okay so the so which of the following is not an architecture of analog to a digital converter the answer is r to r ladder network so we'll go to the uh, next question question number 52 a derivative of minus sin x with respect to minus cos x now what if you get this kind of question with respect to what you will do we have to differentiate derivative of sin x u now we will take u as sin x u equal to minus sin x now du by dx equal to minus sin x derivative is cos x now uh, again uh, v v equal to minus cos x uh, dv by dx minus cos x derivative equal to minus sin x so answer is sin x now to with respect to do you want so we have to diff divide du by dx divided by dv by dx which equal to uh, so du by dx du by my dx means minus sorry minus cos x divided by sin x so we'll get um, cos by sin equal to cot minus cot x so this is the answer option c minus cot x question number 53 uh, what will be the current what will be the current through the resistor in the figure given below now if you see here uh, this is the battery this is the battery here and one uh, diode is connected in series and the resistor is acting as a load so now the diode is reverse biased see this diode is a reverse biased anode and cathode of the diode the diode is reverse biased so it doesn't conduct if i redraw the circuit it's a battery diode act diode will act like a open circuit so diode will act like a open circuit that is a 10 ohm resistor 10 ohm resistor now here this is open so the current flow in the open circuit current flow is zero so answer is option c what will be the current through the resistor in the figure given below that is zero amps the name of the register which stores the address of the next instruction to be executed in 8085 microprocessor 8085 microprocessor now how in a microcontroller how the program is stored see when you see you write a command move move a comma b this is right 8085 micro command command move a comma b uh, so this is a, some command uh, so this is the command mbi mbi move immediate move move a comma b move immediate 
one number to it. Uh, right, zero four h. So these are the two commands. Just these are two commands. Uh, two microprocessor instructions. So it will be stored as thousand. Thousand. It will be stored as thousand. Thousand two. Thousand two h like this. These are the memory location. These are the memory location stored. So uh, these 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 numbers are stored in program counter. Program counter. These are stored in program counter. So the answer is option C. Program counter. Whatever the instructions we are storing, it will it gets stored in a memory location. Memory location. Memory location. So the so it is a program counter. Now one more uh, one more thing. See there are two 16-bit uh, registers in 8085. Uh, this program counter also 16-bit. Then uh, this stake pointer, stake pointer also 16-bit. Question number. 55 in the given the given figure calculate the power dissipated in a resistor r3 so one six volt battery is connected uh, these resistors all are one kilo ohm these all are one kilo ohm one kilo ohm when two these resistors are all one kilo ohm when two one kilo ohms are connected in parallel one kilo ohm, one kilo ohm, then we will get effectively 0.5 kilo ohm. Okay, now we have to find the whatever the power dissipated in the what is the power dissipated in the R3 resistor. R3 we have to find the power dissipation. If you know the current, we can take it as v i square r i square r gives the power dissipator now we will calculate the what is the total current so here uh, this is a point 0.5 point so total resistance is 1.5 kilo ohm because the circuit reduces to it reduces to 6 volt battery 6 volt battery connected to 1 kilo ohm and 0.5 kilo ohm. kilo ohm. the total is 1.5 kilo ohm so i equal to 6 v by r what is the r value r value is equal to 1.5 will get 4 milliamps 4 milliamps whenever you solve this these kind of problems always take voltage in volts current in milliamps resistor in kilo ohms then you won't get doubt, doubt about the units so it is 4 milliamps Current. Now we got I. So here the I is 4 milliamps. It's a series circuit. No? So here 4 milliamps flowing. So same 4 milliamps will be coming here. Now we have equal resistor 1 kilo ohm, 1 kilo ohm we have. So what happened? It will get it will get divided. So 2 milliamps current should flow here and here also 2 milliamps. Because of equal resistor, current will take divide equally. 2 milliamps will flow here, 2 milliamps will flow here. Now, power, what is the power we are given? Power is equal to I square R. So 2 square R equal to 1 kilo ohm. So it is 4 milliwatt. So the answer is 4 milliwatt. Option B 4 milliwatt. Question number 56.
a 1 megahertz carrier is amplitude modulated using a 1 kilohertz signal using a 1 kilohertz signal what is the bandwidth required for transmission what is the bandwidth required for transmission so it is an am am modulation the am modulation a modulation we will have side bands will be there so this is the if you look at the a modulation this is our carrier then there will be two side bands sorry sorry there will be two side bands the two side bands I am not so familiar with the tool in the difficulty I am having it. So, uh, this is the FC minus FM. FC is the carrier frequency and FM is the modulation frequency. Uh, this is FC minus FM. FC this is FC plus FM and this is Fc minus Fm. Fc minus Fm. Oh, this is the M E C by two. This also M E C by two. Now we are we are interested in the bandwidth. Bandwidth of Fm is given as Fc plus Fm, Fc plus Fm, that is carrier frequency plus the higher frequency side band minus lower frequency side band, that is Fc minus f so this is the bandwidth this is the bandwidth equation for a which equal to c f this is the equation bandwidth if you open the bracket fc plus f m minus f c plus f m so f c f c cancels so we will be left with 2 f m so bandwidth of f m bandwidth of bandwidth of not fm am wave am transmission is two times the fm fm is the modulating fm is the modulating signal so what is our modulating signal here our carrier frequency is one megahertz carrier is amplitude modulated using a one kilohertz signal one kilohertz uh, this is our fm one kilohertz now bandwidth equal to two times f of 2 into 1 kilohertz so it will be 2 kilohertz 2 kilohertz 2 kilohertz is the bandwidth bandwidth required for transmission question number 57 device used for switching high current of order of 100 amps Uh, option A regulator, option B contactor, option C a read relay, option D mercury wetted relay. Out of this the answer is contactor. Contactor. The contactor can support uh, from 15 amps to 12,000, 15 to 12,500 12, amps of current. This contactor can support contactor can support so the answer is option b contactor and the relay we use for low lower current relay up to normally up to 20 up to 20 amps relay we use up to 20 amps and comparing both uh, this is speed is high relay relay is fast 
from conductor bits law so next question question number 58 what is the frequency range of audio signals what is the frequency range of audio signals this is a very simple question i think the next question everybody knows that is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz now 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz now uh, we have am 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 transmission what is the frequency range of am transmission and that is 550 kilohertz to 550 kilohertz to 1720 kilohertz uh, this is this is for am transmission am transmission similar way uh, what is the visible light for visible light what is the frequency visible light what is the frequency it is 400 to 10 to the power 12 hertz that is 400 tera hertz to 800 tera hertz tera hertz instead of writing 12 i wrote t so this is for the visible light and for fm what is the frequency range of fm that is 88 fm 88 megahertz to 88 megahertz to 108 megahertz whatever fm you are listening our 98 for to 94.1 all are in this fm range uh, this is the your light visible range the same thing we can mention it in the wavelength also that is 780 nanometer to 400 780 to 380 nanometer these are not have to remember so direct question possibility is there so we will go to the next question 59 The characteristic impedance of the commonly used coaxial cable RG58 is RG58 male 58 59. There are two. Uh, see these two cables are there RG58 and RG59. So these two cables have different impedance this rg58 cable has cable the impedance is 50 ohm here for rg59 impedance is 75 ohms you have to remember see rg58 is the smallest number compared to rg59 50 come 59 so 59 is a higher higher impedance that is 75 ohm 58 is the lower impedance and the other thing is that uh, where it is used where it is used uh, this 50 ohm this rg58 that 50 ohm is used for a, a radio communication communication from a ethernet related ethernet ethernet uh, this rg59 that is a 70 ohm 75 ohm impedance is there uh, this is used for a cable TV. This is used for cable TV. Uh, then uh, this one closed CCTV, closed circuit TV. So we have to add this to we have to remember 59 is the for the smallest impedance that is 50 ohm and 59 is for the highest impedance. So anyway, our exams are getting delayed due to COVID. I think we hope it will start maybe next year, the beginning, maybe Jan, February, we can expect the exams. So, question number 60. Which digital technology is commonly used in PLSI devices? Which digital technology is commonly used in VLSI devices. 
VLSIs, VLSIs, VLSIs very large scale, VLS, VL, SI, it is very large scale, large scale integration, integration. The answer is option C, CMOS. CMOS, CMOS can, if you take a unit only, unit area, one unit, it can accommodate more number of components. So the density, density, component density is more in CMOS. That is why this is used. Now, uh, this CMOS, CMOS has CMOS, and uh, you can uh, take TTL also, you can take it, then one more is there, ECL, ECL. Comparing to all these, this is the, this is consists lower, this is a very low power, low power consumption. This concept, very low power, low power. This takes maximum power, maximum power. TTL is in between. One more, uh, okay. Then uh, this is the slowest one. Slow, slowest, slowest. This is the fastest, fastest. In ECL, the transistors are not allowed to go into complete saturation, so that is why this is the fastest. And the noise immunity is this CMOS is having the highest noise immunity. This is 1.5 volt. Noise immunity will get. In uh, TTL, it is only 0.5 volt, and in ECL, it is around 0.16 volt. So these are the some differences you should know. These differences. The propag and the propagation will okay. Let not to go into it. So the answer is very large scale integration. You know, CMOS. That is the that is the CMOS is used for the very large scale integration technology. Next question number 61. Question number 61. What is the peak voltage of a sinusoidal signal of 7 volt RMS? Now here are some terms you have to understand. Last video I have made a mistake. So if we take this from here to here this is the this is the this is the peak voltage in the positive side uh, this is the peak voltage in the negative side if you take these two between this is the v peak to peak this is the v peak to peak now if if we know the peak to peak v rms V RMS voltage equal to V peak divided by root 2. So uh, this is the equation. Now what is uh, V peak? We know the V RMS, RMS voltage that is 7 volt. V peak equal to root 2 multiplied by V RMS. In this question, uh, V peak V peak equal to root to value of root to is 1.41 multiplied by 7. If you multiply 141 divided by 7. 7, 4 7 are 28, remainder 2, 9. 9 point, so how many digits? 2. 9.87 we got. So which is the nearest value? 9.9. .9. We can count it to 9.9. .9. The answer is option A. Next question. Which of the following will not convert light energy into electrical energy? See what? Which of the following will not convert? Will not convert. Always you have to read the question completely. Entirely. Then only you should answer it. Which of the following will not convert light energy into electrical energy? See light emitting load, we know that it only emits, it doesn't convert light energy to electrical energy. So the answer is option A. Photodiode. 
photodiode accepts the light and it gives out an electrical quantity phototransistor phototransistor also accepts the light and gives out electrical output electric a small voltage it gives solar cell also similar way it accepts the light and it provides electrical quantity using the see this is solar cell you two, two things you have to remember what is the efficiency of the solar cell it is around 15 percent 15 percent is the efficiency of the solar cell and it gives out dc okay it gives out dc so a solar cell gives out a dc and solar cell a solar cell gives out dc and the efficiency is around 15 percent only and your drawing is very bad please be here the next question question number 63 which is not a digital modulation technique which is not a which is digital modulation technique see the pcm this is a pcm this is a pcm pulse code modulation Pulse code modulation is a digital modulation technique. So what happened? This will have a. It has got a. So the PCM, pulse code modulation. This is a. Uh, it has got one sampler will be there. This is the sampler. The sampler out will go to a condenser. Sampler out will go to a Condenser. Condenser out goes to encoder. Encoder. So this will be the analog analog input. This analog input will be there. The sampler will sample it. The sampler one sampler has samples. We will have many samples like this, many levels, infinite number of levels we will have. What happens? The condenser does it will take this if, if it is if it is a 8 bit if you are doing 8 bit condensing we will be getting maximum 255 so like that this here it will be limited it won't have infinite number of levels it will have a limited number of levels condenser then a decoder we will get a digital output digital digital output we will get frequency shift key and phase shift key both are Binary under comes under binary shift key. Both comes under binary shift key. Shift key. So this is all these three are digital digital technique. So phase modulation. This is the answer. Phase modulation is not a digital technique technique. It's an amplitude, uh, not amplitude, angle modulation. It comes with the angle angle modulation. Phase modulation is the answer. Next question: Which of the following? Which of the following following convert chemical energy to electrical energy? Chemical energy to chemical energy. Load cell. Now, option option A load cell. Option B dry cell. Option D solar cell. Option D LED. Now load cell. What are load cell? This load cell is used in our weighing machine. Weighing machine they use. Weighing machine. This load cell is used in weighing machine. Weighing machine. This is convert load cell pressure. Pressure or force to electrical. Electrical. Uh, next, what is there? Dry cell. Dry cell. Dry cell is means whatever the battery, you know, the cell or battery is used for that, or flashlight, clocks. That what is that? That will convert uh, chemical energy. That is chemical energy to chemical energy to chemical energy to this converts chemical energy to electrical energy electrical energy electrical uh, next is the solar cell solar cell it a uh, solar cell what it does it does uh, 
light to light to electric electrical light to electrical light to electrical and the last one is the led led is uh, it does electrical to light that's what electrical energy to electrical to light that's what led does so the answer is option b dry cell this dry cell convert chemical energy into electrical energy now if you know how the construction of a dry cell uh, there will be a can uh, that is a sink that is made up of sink sink and then there will be a ca carbon rod and on top one the brass brass will be there this sink container this is the sink container that is the sink sink this is made of a sink this is the negative negative electrode electrode this is a negative electrode negative electrode means anode one electrode what is the electrolyte here used electrolyte is the ammonium it is ammonium ammonium chloride ammonium ammonium chloride ammonium chloride is the electrolyte used here electrolyte used here ammonium chloride is the electrolyte used here this is a dry cell actually before this uh, before this there was one cell called Leclanche cell Leclanche that is one of the wet wet cell there was liquid in it but in this dry cell there is a moisture a moisture uh, and there is a moisture moisture paste the moisture uh, powder and paste is there this uh, ammonium chloride paste is there that is a electrolyte so we'll go to the next question question number 65 which of the following is not a basic element of the microprocessor see to make a microprocessor accumulator arithmetic logic and resistor is must but this, this is an optional this is an optional this is not a must for a micro micro processor so the answer is option d timer Timer is not a basic element, but nowadays all microcontrollers comes with microprocessor comes with a timer. But not a basic element of the microprocessor. Okay, next question. 66. Which of the following is a volatile memory? First of all, volatile memory means what? Volatile. Volatile means vol volatile memory. Volatile memory means when we power off, when power off, data lost, data lost, power off, data is lost. The similar non-volatile memory, non, non-volatile, or non-volatile. Non-volatile means if it power off also, data is not lost. Now. EEPROM electrically programmable read only memory. Option B electrically erasable programmable read only memory. Option C DVD. Option D static RAM. This static RAM is the answer. Option D. This RAM, whatever way, static RAM as well as dynamic RAM, whenever power goes, the data is lost. So the answer is option D static RAM. Which of the conformal coating material is difficult to remove chemically using a solvent? Chemically using a solvent. The answer is parlin. 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 I see the parlin is uh, deposited in a thin layer using a using a method called 
वेपर वेपर फेस डेपोजिशन वेपर फेस डेपोजिशन डेपोजिशन सो पैनल इज दिस इज द मटेरियल केमिकली इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू रिमूव दिस मटेरियल द सिलिकॉन सिलिकॉन इज समवट ड्रबरी बट इट विल बी गुड अगेंस्ट द केमिकल 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 मॉइस्चर ओके विच ऑफ द कंफर्मल कॉटिंग मेटीरियल इज डिफिकल्ट टू रिमूव केमिकली यूसिंग ए सॉलवेंट आंसर इज ऑप्शन बी पैरलिंग दिस अक्रिलिक 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 इज ईजी टू रिमूव अक्रिल अक्रिलिक ईजी टू रिमूव दिस कॉटिंग इज ईजी टू रिमूव The silicon type, silicon, silicon is some somewhat, silicon is somewhat rubber type, rubber type. You could ask anything, any questions related to this conformal coating. Okay, so we will go to the next question. Which of the following is a universal gate? So there are two universal gates. The answer is option B, NAND gate. But NOR gate also a universal gate. So using a NAND gate, uh, how do we realize gates? You see now we have a NAND gate. This is a NAND gate. Two inputs A B. Now if we short this and give A here, we will get A complement here. This is the NOT gate. Not. So if we have NAND gate, how do you get a AND gate? We have here A B, A B. Similar way, you add a NOT gate here. Two inputs are shorter. NOT gate. This is the here. This is the AND gate. AND gate. Then uh, what else we can make? We can make OR gate here. OR gate. OR gate. OR gate. We put a NAND gate. NAND gate out. Input I'll short the inputs. I'll short the inputs. And give A. A. B. Uh, this is the. Or gate, or gate. Now one more gate is there uh, that is the uh, normally used the main one of the more gate is the XOR gate. XOR gate. XOR gate XOR A B So this is the XOR gate. Here we will get the XOR gate. XOR gate. So now if you see XOR gate, how many, uh, how many, for XOR gate, how many gates we are used to realize, to realize in XOR gate, how many gates we are used? One, two, three, four. So using four, using four NAND gates, we can realize the XOR gate. So what of the X? This is the XOR gate. There is one more. If we invert this, if we take out this and invert it, we will get the XNOR gate. XNOR gate. XNOR gate. So, so to realize the XNOR gate, we need five gates for the XNOR gate. And what is the uh, equation for the XOR gate 
okay i think we will we'll have a, we'll have a, another video for it on solve sheet okay now we'll go to the next question question number 16 what is the what is the operating region of a bipolar transistor when both junctions are forward biased there are the mainly three transistors work in active region active re, active or linear active or linear region active or linear region the other is the cutoff the second one is the cutoff and one is the cutoff and then saturation saturation now in the active region uh, we have four junctions and that is what are the junctions we have emitter base junction and a base collector junction base collector junction base collector junction now if the transistor is operating in the linear region emitter junction will emitter base junction will be forward biased and the base collector junction will be base collector junction will be reverse biased reverse biased reverse biased if it is the cutoff region if the both the emitter base emitter emitter base junction and collector base junction if both junctions are reversed by us it will be cut off it will be cut off if both the junctions are forward biased uh, then it will be in saturation so the question is what is the operating region of a bipolar junction transistor when both junctions are forward biased both junctions are forward biased that is saturation <coughs> sorry what is the operating region of a bipolar junction transistor when both junctions are forward biased that is saturation okay now this is the next question question number seven what will be the value of the logic function a b complement or a bar b or a when a equal to 1 and b equal to 1 we will just draw the diagram and see what happens we have here we have okay this a b is we will assume that it is coming from a and gate yes a b a b bar and then what is one more and gate is there one more and gate that is a bar b then we have one a one more input now we have a now or gate we need one or gate a three input or gate three input or gate three input or gate three input or gate so this is this comes here and second one and one more input is coming that is the a and already he is saying a equal to 1 in an OR gate whenever one any of the input is 1 any of the input is 1 output will be 1 so the answer is 1 output will be 1 so the answer is option B 1 question number 71 what is the packaging technology used used in integrated circuits to reduce space in pc so nowadays you might have seen many new pcs or our for our phones our phones and many uh, led tv lcd tv all those stuff come with a small uh, miniature components that is the smd technology the answer is option a surface mount technology this is used used as the Packaging. This is the packaging technology. DIP is dual inline package. This is the older one. Now also we are using it as for the requirement. 
question number 72 in the process of making a mechanical joint between the strip end of a wire and a connected pin see we see this is this is the picture uh, using a crimping tool and a pin a wire is inserted a wire is inserted here a wire is inserted in a pin and the pin is crimping with the wire the answer is option c crimping the process of making a mechanical joint between the stick end of a wire and a connected pin and the answer is crimping so this is the braiding braiding is uh, just like uh, some uh, some girls will tie their hair in somewhat braided braiding hair also in say the similar way uh, we put our uh, gas gas tube is okay where we gas out connection this kind of braided tools will use it's kind of a uh, weaving kind of it, yeah, that is what this picture shows this is the this is what braiding next question 73 how many pn junctions are there in an scr an scr scr is consist of question is uh, how many how many pn junctions are how many pn junctions are there in an scr there in an scr scr is like a two pn junctions two pn junctions back to back connected okay uh, we have two pn junctions back to back connected so this is our p n p n so this is the first junction j1 this is the second junction j2 this is the third junction j3 j3 so it is three junction it's a three junction device three with how many pn junctions are there in a scr the answer is option c3 now this is the anode of the scr this is the cathode of the scr what is the symbol of scr this is the gate this is a cathode See, so this is the anode now anode is there cathode is there so this is the gate actually this is the gate near to the positive p region of the cathode where the gate comes question number 74 question number 74 What is the common shape of pad corresponding to pin number 105, 105 IC? So IC is if you see the PCB, all the PCB, whatever PCB you make, we have to show which is the first pin of the IC. So that a person who fabricates the PCB can easily identify which is the one. See, if you see here, this square is shown by a square this is the this is the first pin of an ic this is shown as a square so square this is the first pin of ic that is a square indicated by a rectangle or square that is the first pin of the ic the answer is option a square question number 75 HRC fuse stands for there are different types of fuses HRC fuse stands for the answer is high rupturing capacity fuse high rupturing capacity fuse high rupturing capacity fuse 
higher absorbing capacity fuses see these are the hrc fuses hrc fuses now if you see this fuse what are the these are the hrd fuses this fuse rating will be there from 2 amps to 800 amps that is a normal range of hrc fuse this is used for overload protection overload protection overload protection similar way for short circuit protection see normally what happens whenever when a motor starts initially it draws high current then it reduces so this fuse fuse constructed in such a way that it has got an internal fusing element and it is bounded by a uh, some ceramic powder after 12 seconds I, I think it's 12 seconds it allow high current at allow normally our motors motors or induction inductor based high current devices starting current will be high so for a small duration of time high current is allowed after that the fuse just blows off and the, the fuse is in a vacuum so there is arc protection also is there in this fuse arc protection arc protected because it is in vacuum so these are the advantages of hrc fuse that is high rupturing fuse high rupturing high rupturing fuse question number 76 so uh, please subscribe my channel and share with your friends so that i will try i'm trying to make a uh, good content uh, this tool is not i'm not so familiar with the tool so i hope i will get uh, familiar soon used to it soon so i will explain you in a better way good way <coughs> so Calculate the synchronous speed of a three phase induction motor with four poles operating from one fifth operating from 50 hertz. The speed, the RPM of a synchronous machine is given by 120 F 120 multiplied by frequency divided by number of poles. So 120 what is the frequency rpm 120 times the frequency divided by the number of poles frequency is 50 hertz number of what is the number of poles number of poles 4 so 30 30 multiplied by 50 1500 so this is the rpm so this is the rpm you have to remember this equation well, how about it? this is the equation for rpm 120 f divided by n where n is the number of pole f is the operating frequency question number what is the fan out of a typical two input tti gate fan out means how many gates it can it can drive fan out means how many gates it can drive the fan out of a TTL gate is 10. We will go to the next question 78. So, what is the output? What is the output? What is the output waveform of A038 function generator? Option A square, option B triangle, option C sine, option D, all of the above. So this is the block diagram of this is the block diagram of A038 A038 IC integrated circuit. If you see here, it gives out sine wave. See it gives out sine wave. It gives out sine wave 
it gives out triangular wave it gives out square wave it gives out square wave it gives out square wave so the answer is all of the above so as per the a038 log diagram it gives triangle square sign it is just like our function generator question number 79 a circuit has a circuit has a resistor of 2 ohm and a capacitor of 1 microfarad connected in series that means uh, we have a we have a resistor and a capacitor connected in connected in series let us assume that some some 5 volt or whatever one supply is there what is the the time constant of the circuit is what is time constant equal to rc time constant is given by rc t equal to r r equal to 2 2 ohms multiplied by capacitance what is the capacitor 1 microfarad that is 1 into by 10 to the power minus 6 farad which gives 2 micro second the answer is option a 2 micro second now the, this is the law next is the last question we will complete the 2019 VSSE paper with this question all of you please share my channel with your friends so it will be useful for them if you have any suggestions or any particular topic video please comment please put it in the comment section now this is our last question today uh, which of the following conditions are needed to properly bias an NPN transistor as an amplifier amplifier to use it in a, a transistor in a, a, as an amplifier amplifier we have to make sure the transistor is operating in active region for that you use bias in the transistor so this to make it the active region how what is the active region we have two junctions emitter base junction and collector base junction this has to be emitter base junction has to be forward biased and collector base junction has to be reverse biased if the transistor is in active region biased in active region it will act as an amplifier so we will see the options option a apply a large voltage on the base no option b forward bias the collector and base junction and collector base junction forward bias and reverse bias the emitter base junction no uh, apply a positive voltage on the n type material and a negative voltage on the p type material no forward bias the emitter base junction and reverse bias the collector base junction and the answer is option d so the transistor in active region it will amplify the signal faithfully so friends thanks for watching please share the share the video with your friends thank you